to endorse, endorse, I can't get my words out. I don't particularly. Hey, woodlanders. Welcome to the woodlog. Come on in to woodland paradise. The sunrise this morning was just stunning. The cows with me today. She's busy extracting at the moment, filling the trailer up. Yesterday we did a bit up here, only I forgot my camera and we only had a couple of hours to get a little bit done. So we did some, a little bit of felling just here in this area here. Hopefully we'll get this all cut by the end of this week. So Karen's had to go, she's gone for her dinner. She did a trailer full of extracting this morning, which was a great help. I've just unloaded that in the yard. And I managed to get two tankfuls done this morning, which is another bonus. This afternoon, it's even more of the same. So the start of the coppice cut, I got myself a new bar and chain because the bar and chain that I got with this 261 was one of them full chisel varieties. It's not good for me. Too much kickback. So I decided to get one of these light 04 bars, which is slightly thinner, which means the whole bar is slightly narrower. I got a new chain, a semi-chisel. But I just wanted to give you my super brief summary of the light 04 chain and bar. It's been brilliant. I've had hardly any kickback. It stays sharper longer. We think of upgrading from a wide curve to a narrow curve bar. I would honestly say it's been one of the best upgrades I've had. So yeah, there you go. The still Lito 4 bar and chain on an MS261 uh, has my wholehearted recommendation and I would happily go out and buy the same thing again. The bar was about uh, 58 quid and the chain was 19. And there was no other modifications due to it at all. It all fits in the same sprocket and everything. This morning was simply stunning. The sunrise was epic. The weather was lovely. It's freezing. It was like minus three this morning. About mid-morning, I'm like, oh, it's gone chilly. What's going on? And I turned around and realised underneath my protective little visor that the fog's rolled in. I heard a thing on the radio this morning, it was on about, it was Radio 2, and it's that, what's her name, Sarah Summit anyway, whatever her name is. She was on about regrets, <laughs> it's quite funny listening to some of the people's replies, so it made me think, uh, if you fancy commenting on such a daft topic, what is your biggest regret? That could be interesting as a chit chat. Anyway, I must press on. Let's get some more copies cut. If you'll just indulge me on trying to describe what we've done today. We started about 
here sort of zigzagged away up here and round and sort of where I'm stood and then I've just zigzagged my way into here and then to show you roughly what's left there's about uh, eight to ten stools in this bit here where the chainsaw is and if I just spin you around ever so gently to this bit here there might be 16 stools in in this little block here that could be this year's hazel coppice cut at Rosserston. Now I'm by no means finished, so we don't pull out the champagne yet. But that's a quite a significant achievement, and we've got an awful lot of extraction to do. I know that. Now Jeff's a good fella, and he's hopefully going to let me borrow his blue uh, timber trailer he built. Now the only thing he needs is a hydraulic grab on it, but I think he's going to work on that. So what I'm going to do now, it's half past three, we've got three tank pulls done today and I'm just going to load up the trailer with some firewood, unload that in the yard. It's going to be a sprint to the finish because I've not really got much time for it, it was dark. You know when birds get to the end of their season for rearing their young, around about July, August time and the little songbirds have had enough and they've raised two lots of kids and you notice all their feathers all a little bit ragged and the colour's not very vibrant anymore. Well, they just look a little bit sorry for themselves. <laughs> That's kind of like how I feel at the end of this coppice. I'm so close now, but just a little bit on the... Please, no more coppice cutting. I want to get on to do something else. And it's just nice to know that you've got one area almost complete. Hey up. Little gardening job this morning, so a bit more lollipopping, you could say. It was an uh, interesting tree. It's a Prunus Posada, I think it is. Prunus Posada. I'll look that up. And Lady has it pruned every year. But to be honest, it's it's a bit too late really for it. It's always done okay in the winter prunes, but it's, it's not ideal. So please don't take my... Um, timing as anything to be an example because it's now January and pruning a prunus in January really is not recommended at all. It's a fiddle because of course it produces these like witch's brooms at the ends of each stem. Next year it wants pruning back underneath all of that so it produces some fresh uh, growth because it's sort of become a bit like mini pollards it's got this tree full of miniature pollards everywhere. <laughs> so this afternoon, I've got a couple of hours, I've got some ash poles to get out, go and cut those, knowing that I've got the order done near the birds. Have you ever had chilblains? cold snap we had of the week last week there was one day when my feet got particularly cold in these boots and I tell you what the chillblains if it's not frostbite on my fingers it's chillblains on my toes so today's Wednesday for a couple of weeks I've not done my one word Wednesday so I've been having a think and this week for me, my one word for this week or for Wednesday, pressured. Somehow I just feel under pressure this week. Anyway, let me know. What's your, your one word Wednesday for this week? How are you getting on? How do you feel? What word would you use to describe your week or your Wednesday? Let me know in the comments. Look forward to that. We're in this ash down here, look. And to be honest, there's not much left. These ash trees in this summer really did struggle. I just thought, you know what, I think I'm just gonna clear fell this. So that's the mission really, not necessarily to clear fell it today. And there's only about 25 trees in here, I imagine. 
which is such a shame because ash is fantastic timber. And then I've got some hazel to go in, so I'm going to plant the hazel up, which means that that hazel coop that we cut earlier on this year, last, well, this season anyway, we cut that in about September, October, that then will become an extension and this will be linked with that. Oh, that's made a start, if you just rotate you around you might be able to see where I made a start on it all. I've got my poles out, it's getting toward dusk. I think I'm going to go for my tea and I'll no doubt see you in the morning. Good morning! got that Friday feeling today. Have you watched that YouTube thing where there's a guy at the side of a car and he does this, it's Friday again, and he does this dance. Honestly, every time I watch that it makes me smile. Oops, where there's blame there's a claim. It's Friday and we are so close to getting this coop finished. It started well this morning. I come into the yard, the firewood chap was loading up firewood out of Jeff's pile and I thought oh, I'll give him a chuck on with the wood and the firewood guy is a bit like me likes to have a natter and tells us a few stories of course it's half past nine now isn't it so I'm now behind but not to worry we've got these few here and then these sort of medium sized stools in here I reckon it's doable if we can get this finished today yesterday was a busy day car MOTs the contractors did the fence next door to us. They've still got a bit more to do. And I got frustrated because they used our gateway to get in so that they could hadn't got to walk so far with all the materials. And I told them particularly, don't drive on the grass because they're only in two wheel drive vans. Don't go on the grass. And I guess up there and they drove on the grass and then they got stuck, which wasn't great. So now I've got two great wheeling marks where one van got stuck and span his way out and then another van got stuck and span his way out so we've got two mud tracks now at the woodland which is not what I wanted right I was going to tell you something else and I can't think what that was either lunch time in fact it's gone lunch time it's going okay but I'll have my lunch and then we'll get that one done and then we've got one two three maybe 14 left but some of these are nearly half dead so 10 good stools left so there's a chance yet there's a chance don't give up on me Can you believe it? I'm on my fifth tank full. We've got one stall to finish. It's about the biggest one that I've left till last. What I'll do is I'll attach you to the last stem and shout timber. Hopefully nobody will hear me. It's all a bit weird, isn't it? That's the last, last of the last in Rossiston for this year. An epic sprint to the finish. It's getting dusk. I'm absolutely wrecked. One of the biggest days I've had up here because I just want to try and get this finished on a Friday. Thank crunchy it's Friday.
one. Let's have you on this street. near as dramatic as I wanted it to be. Not to worry. Peace. Fantastic. So do you want a 30 second 360? So, I think I might have earned myself a Guinness tonight. I'm not really a drinker, but occasionally I'll have a Guinness. Let me know what your favorite tipple is. You can celebrate with me. The last hazel stem has been felled in Rosliston. That's it. It's Friday. You know what's coming next. Thanks guys for watching this week. If you're able to, try and enjoy some woodland paradise this weekend or whenever you can really i'll see you on the next one look after yourselves and hopefully next week we can turn a corner and won't have quite so much boring chainsaw work we'll have something else that's equally as boring see you on the next one I know what I was going to talk to you about. Because I'm on Facebook, you know, you troll through and they get all these adverts. Well, anyway, this one come up about cancer research. And they set these challenges. Well, anyway, I'm getting to the point, trust me. For February, they set a number of challenges, but one of them is, can you do 100 skips a day for cancer research? Well, I don't particularly want to endorse any one particular charity because I think it's a personal choice on which charity you choose to support and to do your own research on how they use their money and what percentage of your dollar goes to them or actually goes to the people that need it the most rather than the admin. What I thought was, I've done a bit of skipping before, now I'm, I'm not an athlete, could I do 100 skips a day throughout February, film it, I don't want to take any money because that just gives me an headache thinking about it. But if if it motivates you to either get a bit more active or it motivates you to want to help somebody or you think, you know what, I can give to charity and I'm going to give it to whoever I choose, by all means let me know in the comments whether you think that's a good idea. Would you like to see me on the wood logs skipping every day? But I'd really like to know what your thoughts are on that. And if you fancy it, would you skip with me and come along and join in the fun and do some skips or a run or a cycle ride, whichever you feel like. Try and increase your own levels of fitness if you can or go for a walk if you're able to. If you're able to, nah, that's a cracker. Just something that increases your heart rate just a little bit. And if it's just a little bit of aerobics inside, some chair aerobics or something, that'd be great. Anyway, that's my little postscript. I'm going to go now, I can hardly see a thing, it's gone a little bit dusk here and I'll go and chat to Jeff in the yard and I'll see you next week.